BioClock Studio Winter 2020 presents the Circadian Transcriptomics Dry Lab Tutorial, Part 2 of 4, RNA Sequencing. In the previous video, we briefly introduced different types of omic approaches. We also introduced a study which used metabolomic and transcriptomic approaches to link phenotypic differences in mice to differences in their gene expression and identify rhythmically expressed genes. We saw how researchers generate and collect tissue samples. But how do they identify and quantify the transcripts contained within the cells of those samples? There are multiple types of assays available. mRNA sequencing, called RNA-seq for short, is currently the most advanced and high-throughput assay. mRNA is often used for RNA sequencing because it is the most mature form of protein-coding RNA and is most likely to reflect the proteins made by the cell. This video will discuss how to prepare a sequencing library, how these libraries are mapped to specific genes on the organism's genome, and how the results, called mapped read counts, are normalized. In order to prepare a sequencing library, first, total cellular RNA is extracted from liver tissue. Then, the RNA is mixed with magnetic oligo-DT beads containing stretches of about 12 to 25 repeats of the nucleotide deoxythymine. Deoxythymine forms base pairs with the polyadenosine tails on the 3' end of messenger RNAs, or mRNAs, and allows them to be magnetically separated from the rest of the RNA. Next, because RNA sequencing reads out only stretches of about 75 to 150 bases, the mRNA is fragmented randomly into 200 to 300 base fragments so that sequence derived from many overlapping small fragments will cover most of the length of each RNA molecule. Because RNA is much less stable than DNA, and the methods for sequencing DNA are much more straightforward than for direct sequencing of the RNA, the fragmented RNA molecules are then reverse transcribed into complementary DNA molecules, or cDNA. This cDNA is then ligated to DNA fragments whose sequence creates a unique barcode to identify each sequence cDNA with the sample it originated from. Finally, these barcoded cDNA collections, called libraries, are amplified by the polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. This step creates a pool of cDNA with a high enough concentration for sequencing. To determine which genes are being read in the sequencing data, a program is used to align or map the sequencing reads to this reference genome. Mapping refers to the process of aligning these short stretches of sequence, called reads, back to the specific locations in the reference genome where each stretch of mRNA sequence is encoded. An available whole genome sequence for the organism being studied is necessary for this method. Most standard sequencing methods work by reading nucleotide sequences of the first 50 to 100 bases in each cDNA library fragment. This length is enough to identify where each unique stretch of mRNA maps on the genome. The number of reads that correspond to a gene reflects how many mRNA molecules were transcribed from that gene, providing a measurement of the expression level of individual genes. Mapping tools allow users to specify acceptable rates of mismatches, or clipping caused by errors in library construction, or differences in the RNA reads compared to the reference genome. Scientists must set the appropriate combination of parameters for reads to be counted or rejected to ensure that reads are mapped to the correct genes. In an RNA-seq experiment, there are junction reads that contain a gap relative to the reference genome as a result of comparing the cDNA of a spliced mRNA to the genomic DNA that encodes it. The reads start in one exon, jump over the intron in between, and end in another exon that are spliced together in the mRNA. The gap portion of spliced reads in non-coding intronic regions, indicated by a dashed line, are not counted in the final coverage. Alignments can be visualized as a histogram of the number of reads that map to each location of the genome. These are typically visualized using a software called a genome browser. The number of reads, or read counts, mapped to specific genes serves as the basis for quantifying gene expression. But before comparing gene expression between genes or samples, it's important to first normalize those read counts for gene length and sequencing depth. Sequencing depth refers to the total number of reads that were produced by the machine from a particular sample, which can vary for technical reasons and doesn't necessarily reflect the relative abundance of particular messages. To normalize the values, read counts are converted to a unit called TPM, or transcripts per million. To calculate TPM, first divide the read counts by the length of each gene in kilobases, 
which is 1,000 bases, more fragments will be produced from a longer gene than a shorter one, even if the two produce the same number of transcripts, so normalizing for gene length is necessary. This step gives a value of RPK, or reads per kilobase. As you can see, gene A is twice as long as gene B, so even though it has twice the number of read counts, it has the same RPK value. Next, the RPK value for all the genes within a sample are summed and this value is divided by 1 million. This results in a scaling factor that when applied to the RPK values, normalizes for sequencing depth and gives transcripts per million, or TPM. In this case, gene A and gene B come from the same sample. This means they have the same sequencing depth, which explains why this step has no effect on their relative expression values. In other words, they have the same RPK values relative to each other and the same TPM values relative to each other. The resulting TPM values indicate that gene A and gene B actually have the same expression despite having a different number of read counts. The higher the TPM associated with a particular gene, the more highly that gene is expressed in the cell. This process is how scientists are able to compare expression levels between genes and between different samples. Now that we've gone over RNA-seq, you have the basis for understanding how quantitative gene expression data are obtained from mouse tissue samples. In summary, sequencing libraries are generated from the samples, these libraries are mapped to the organism's genome, and map recounts are normalized. But how do we analyze these data? We will go over this in the next step in part 3 of the Circadian Transcriptomics Dry Lab Tutorial.